The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Paul Dubov with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan. <laughs> The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. join Frank Race for the adventure of the lovable characters. There's something about San Francisco that makes you feel alive. Perhaps it's the climate, but whatever it is, it calls for physical activity. Mark and I had been through a rough day, and yet night found us engaged in a healthful exercise at a bowling alley near our hotel. <laughs> How's that for nicking a split spare? Huh? Very neat, Marcus. That's the frame, and you win again. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, want a pull note of strength? Uh, uh, Make it for a finish time. Give you a chance to get even, huh? Let's have a cup of coffee at the counter first. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, hey, Mac, two Javas, huh? Hey, hey. Hey, look. There's that dame again. The girl Mark referred to had been on hand for an hour or more watching our game. She was lovely in an offbeat sort of way. Not at all like an American girl. She came up to the counter, and at first she hesitated as though she were going to take a seat. Then she changed her mind suddenly and walked toward us. You're Frank Race, no? That's my name, and this is Mr. Donovan. You've been tagging us for about an hour, and I'm curious. I have been deliberating whether or not to trust you with a matter of great importance. It's not an easy decision to make when one is in a strange country. For somebody who is in a strange country, you found us all right in a rather strange place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you're equipped for, sister, it ain't bowling. I know of you by reputation, Mr. Race. The clerk at the hotel said that I might find you here. I, I need your help. My name is Suzette. I am the wife of Prince Mohit Bey. Hey, wait a minute. Ain't he the guy that got that big spread in the papers last week? Yes, yeah, just arrived from India. He's the ruler of the province of Kajan. That's right, Mr. Race. He came to America for medical help. Medicine is not one of my accomplishments. I know. But he needs you in another capacity. Please, come to our suite at the Fair Hills Hotel in about an hour. You must be near my husband because... Well, I am certain that somebody intends to kill him. <laughs> Prince Mohud Bey's suite at the Fair Hills Hotel turned out to be more than a suite. The prince and his retinue, including all 12 of his wives, occupied the entire fourth floor of the hostelry. And all the wives and servants wore native garb, making it difficult to distinguish one from another. But we were finally steered to the apartment of Suzette, where we knocked. Look, Rice, tell me some. Of course. When these people get ready to leave here, how will the hotel know whether they are wearing their clothes or stealing the sheets? <laughs> that is a question, Mark. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rice, Mr. Mr. Donovan, come in, please. I have prepared my mother-in-law for your coming. Your mother-in-law? Yes, the prince's mother, the Maharani of Kajan. She is in the next room through those drapes. She may be very difficult. Show me a mother-in-law that ain't. Quiet, no. Mark. Let's go. Gentlemen, the Maharani of Kajan. The Maharani of Kajan was quite a surprise. She was dressed in tweeds. Her hair was close cropped, and it took only one look at her florid face to tell me she was not a native of India. She was as British as a cup of tea. My daughter-in-law has overstepped her authority in calling you here, gentlemen. However, since you are here, you may as well put an end to her foolish fears. Your son's wife doesn't seem to think they are foolish. My son has 12 wives, and they've all got some sort of complaint. Suzette happens to be French and much too emotional. But, Mama... Don't call me Mama. I, um, I don't like to interfere in a family matter. 
But perhaps you can tell me why you think Suzette's fears are not grounded. Because she's as neurotic as my son. If he had one English girl in the crop he's married, he'd have more backbone. Providence knows I've tried to buck him up. Brother, want a battle axe? Why does your son, the prince, require medical attention? Not medical, Mr. Ray. Psychiatric. We came to America to consult a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with him physically. But there is. He's been having Nonsense. pain. Nonsense. It's all in his mind. You can find that out for yourself, Mr. Race. Dr. Kerner's his psychiatrist. Ask him. It's in the Grayson building. You'll see him tomorrow. Thank you. I will. Very well. Then you're dismissed. But, Mama... You're dismissed. We left the Maharani and stepped into the corridor and did a little broken field running through the other 11 wives who were wandering around like a football team between halves. And then Suzette led us into a small room. She is so strong, so overbearing. Please, you must help me. I should like to see your husband. But this is the ante room to his quarters. I, I would rather not go in with you. Suit yourself. Uh, look, Mark, there's something you can do meanwhile. See if you can locate the home of Dr. Kerner. Kerner. And if you do, call him and ask him if I may drop in on him tonight. Kerner, okay. Uh, see you later. And don't get detoured by a bedsheet on your way out. Uh... And now, the prince. Right through that door. I will try to see you again before you leave. I opened the door and went into the next room. It was a large room, equipped like a gymnasium. Seated in a chair, wearing an undershirt and shorts, was a burly figure reminiscent of Tony Galento. He was puffing on a cigar, and he greeted me through clenched teeth and a tobacco haze. Hi, fella. Well, uh, uh, hello. So what are you staring at me for, Mac? Uh, you're not Prince Mohud Bey. Uh, me the prince? Hey, you got a real sense of humor, Mac. Nah, I ain't the prince. I'm Butsy Regan. I'm a physical culture expert. <laughs> oh, for a minute I thought I'd be needing Dr. Kerner myself. Eh? Uh, nothing. I, um, I came in to see the prince. I thought he was here. He is. He's exercising. At least that's what he calls it. But, uh, where is he? Over there, in the corner of the room. Seeing it was believing it. The prince, clad in his bedsheet, was in the corner, standing on his head. His two feet were up in the air, and he looked like some kind of a modernistic lamp. I've been trying to get him to work out on the rowing machine, but it's no dice. I come up here twice a day, and all he wants to do is stand on his head. He learned it from some guy named uh, Yiki. Yogi. Yeah. Must be a jerk. That could drive him nuts, you know. Is he in a trance, or can I talk to him? You could try. Grab a pillar and sit down in front of him. Uh, thanks. Prince Mohud Bey? Go away. I am concentrating. You can concentrate later. I need some information. Do you have any enemies? I have many enemies. Like who? Everybody. I'm surrounded by enemies. Except for my mother. She protects me. I see. But is there any particular enemy? Who sent you here? Your wife. Don't be evasive. Answer me. Oh, oh the, uh, the one named Suzette. Ah, just as I thought. Another enemy. Get out of here. Get out before I call for help. All right, all right, I'll go. Take it easy. Thanks. Oh, that's okay. Is, um, is he always like this? Yeah. Happy, ain't it? Oh, delightful. Just delightful. Find out where Dr. Kerner lives, Mark? Sure did. Got to join on Knob Hill. I tell him that you was coming to see him. Good. Let's drive over. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long, Mark. Ah, I didn't mind. I had the radio on. It gave me a chance to hear Spade. Sam Spade? Sam Spade. Spade Cooley, the king of the Western Swing. What do you think I am, a traitor? <laughs> Dr. Kerner's home was what you might expect of Knob Hill, luxurious and exclusive. As the butler admitted me, I noticed an imposing portrait of a very striking woman dominating the central hall. I was led into the library, and there was another portrait of the same woman over the fireplace. There were also several photographs of her, expensively framed and prominently displayed in all parts of the room. About five minutes passed before Dr. Kerner came in. I was told that your visit is urgent, Mr. Race. What is your problem? Well, I'm not a patient, Dr. Kerner. Oh? I'm an investigator. I want some information about Prince Mohud Bey. 
I've been informed that you are treating him. The prince, oh, yes. Very interesting case. His wife, <laughs> one of his wives, seems to think that somebody is trying to eliminate the prince. Well, the prince seems to share the same view. He's been a problem, Mr. Race. I don't know how a man can be so childish, so muddled. Then you don't think there's anything to the suspicions? Well, it takes a long time to be sure. Uh, the prince does have a very definite persecution complex, but that's only part of it. The roots are deep in another problem. Mind telling me about it? Since you're an authorized investigator, not at all. Prince Mohud Bey has an Oedipus complex that is staggering. A mother fixation of the worst kind. She dominates his every thought when she's near. She makes him afraid. But uh, how come he has so many wives? She doesn't seem to favor the idea. Well, as I understand it, every time his mother left the province or permitted him to go on a vacation by himself, he married a new girl. Well, uh, understandable. Anything else? No. I'm certain the mother fixation is the root of it. I know it must be difficult for you to understand as a layman, but it's a common psychiatric problem. Some grown men can be handled like children by their mothers. Well, thank you. I'll go now. I'll show you out. Oh, uh, I noticed that you've been eyeing my portraits and photographs. Lovely, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes. The subject is a very attractive woman, quite uh, commanding. Ah, yes, she is. The most wonderful woman in the world. Your wife? Oh, great Jupiter, no, Mr. Race, I'm not married. My mother. Oh, thank you, and good night, Dr. Kerner. I don't know, if you ask me, Race, it all sounds pretty screwy. Maybe yes, Mark, maybe no. But Suzette strikes me as being a sensible girl, even though she is snowed under by the Maharani. You mean you're going to keep working on it? Just for kicks. Even if there's nothing to it, we've been meeting a crop of lovable characters. Yeah, I'll <laughs> buy part of that. We have been meeting characters. Now listen to that. Guy blowing his horn to pass, and he's a half a block behind me. I don't think he wants to pass. He wants us to wait until he catches up to us. Pull over. You're the boss. That you, Mr. Race? It's Butsy, the physical culture expert. Yeah, Butsy. I tried to catch you at the docks, but you was driving off when I got there. You gotta get back to the Fair Hills Hotel right away. Why? What's wrong? I don't know for sure. The dame was hysterical, but somebody's been shot. <laughs> we'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. And now, back to the adventures of Frank Race. Police car surrounded the block near the Fair Hills Hotel by the time we arrived. I flashed my credentials and was admitted to Prince Mohud Bey's fourth floor domain. I passed the prince's apartment and immediately discovered that he was not the victim. He was in the corner, standing on his head, ignoring the pleas of a police sergeant who wanted him right side up for questioning. I found Suzette's room under police guard. The body of a woman was stretched out near the window. An ambulance attendant was fixing her shoulder. Suzette was in the quarters of the Maharani. This is no time for hysterics, Suzette. She's had quite a shock, I imagine. You might try being kind. Young man, I am the Maraharani of Kajan, and no commoner You is happen going to, to tell be me... in the United States, dear lady. We're all commoners here, and we obey nobody but the traffic cop on the corner, so you can stop that line of chatter. <gasps> now, come on, honey. Sit up. Oh, Race, it was horrible. I saw it. Grab hold, honey, grab hold. Now, tell me what happened. I, I was getting ready to retire, and the shot came through the window. <laughs> And then she fell. There's one thing I don't know. Who was the victim? My servant. One of the maids. An entirely unimportant person. I told you to get off that line. Shootings are very important here, whether the victim is a maid or a queen. Oh, that poor girl. Why would anybody want to shoot her? I don't think anybody did. It was accidental. That bullet was meant for you, baby. For me? Nonsense. Is it? We'll see. Now, you said the bullet came through the window. Yes, but I didn't even hear it. We didn't know it was a bullet until later. Is there a balcony outside the window? No, nothing. 
You better call the ambulance doctor when he's finished and have him give you a sedative. I'm going to find the officer in charge. <laughs> I found the officer in charge and stuck with him until he got a ballistic report. The bullet had come from a high-powered rifle. With that bit of information, I picked Mark up and headed for the streets. All right, so what are you looking at the building for? Suzette's room is located on the front of the hotel, and the shot came from the outside. Yet there's nothing across the street but a small public park. Wait a minute. You mean a shot was fired from the park? Up to a fourth-floor window? No. The bullet took almost a straight course. Oh, so maybe the guy with the gun climbed a tree? No. None of the trees are that tall. The shot must have been fired from one of the buildings on the other side of the park. Yeah, great, but by who? Dead Eye Dick? It's a good 600 yards over to them buildings. That's not too far for an expert marksman with a telescopic sight. And that's why Suzette didn't hear a shot. Yeah, but somebody over there would have heard it. That isn't too choice a neighborhood over there, Mark. The park is the dividing line. Hey, wait a minute, that's right. We drove past the other side and the way down before, and uh, there's a penny arcade and, and... And a shooting gallery? Yeah. So a shot over there could get lost. Look, I want you to check those buildings, fourth and fifth floor levels. See if you can find where the shot may have come from. Will do. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to see if I can bake an upside-down cake. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mac, the cops couldn't flip them over, so I don't see how you expect to do it. Talk to them the way you did before. All right, but he's turning my whole world topsy-turvy. I feel silly talking to a man who's standing on his head. So I gotta be here a couple of hours a day, and I feel silly too. But after all, Mac, a buck's a buck. For what I get on his job, I'll blow a bubble pipe if he wants. You've got logic on your side, Butsy. Well, I guess it's the only way. Nice to see you again, Prince. Let's be friends. You mind if I shake your foot? Go away. You disturb my meditation. Ever do any big game hunting, Prince? Why do you want to know? Are you gathering information for my enemies? No, I'm planning to visit your country. I thought we might get together and bag a few tigers. I won't go with you. I don't like you. I won't let you use my elephants. My mother won't even let you get into the province. You mean you're going to keep all those nice tigers for yourself? Yes. All right. Then I won't let you play with my Parcheesi set. See you later. See? He's as cracked as a glass pitcher after a brewer's convention. He's not as cracked as he seems to be, Butsy. What do you mean? Come into the ante room for a minute. Well, sure. How come Suzette called you to go after me when I was out at the doctor's? She didn't have to call me. I was right here. I guess she picked me because I know the town. Somebody could have telephoned. The doc's number ain't listed. Where was uh, Nature Boy when the shooting took place? In there, standing on his noggin. Where else? You're sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. I was with him. All I ever seemed to do was sit there and count his toes. Just the same, keep your eye on him. He may be all right when he's standing on his head, but things may start to happen if he gets on his feet. It was a cinch. Nothing else would happen at the Fair Hills Hotel while the boys in blue were parading the halls. Mark hadn't returned yet, so I left a message at the desk telling him I'd gone back to our hotel to turn in for the night. I was drifting off to dreamland when Mark, as usual, slipped in on tiptoe. Hey, Ray, up, boy. Up, oh, up into the wall. Come oh, on, talk. Oh, come on, let's Marcus, go. Let's go. Marcus, where did you learn to be so genteel? Well, I can't come in without opening the door, can I? Come on, come on. Pile out of the oh, kip. I got things to show you. Let's like go. what? Like where the shot could have come from that hit that maid. Is it a place that ties in? Like a couple of Boy Scout knots. Look. Do you know what's on the fourth floor one of them buildings smack across the park? I'll know if you ever get around to telling me. I am there. A gymnasium. A physical culture studio owned by one Butsy Regan. And unless I am very much mistaken, he is the same guy which you said was hired to keep the prints in trim. That is a chunk of information, Mark. Toss me my clothes. Sighting here. Uh, 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 oh, wait a minute. There is more. And uh, this could also fit. What is it? What's the name of that sick... Uh, 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 Ah, uh, you know, uh, the sick guy, the, the doctor. You mean the psychiatrist? Yeah, yeah, that's him, the psychiatrist, yeah. Kerner. Yeah, well, that, that's what I thought, yeah. Well, on, on, on the fifth floor of the next building, see, there's an office for James Kerner. It rings a bell. The last name, I mean, so I checked, see. The guy runs a salvage business, and he happens to be the doc's brother. <laughs> How do you like that? You like my information? Oh, yeah. Marcus, I love it. Let's have a look at both those places right now. <laughs> The 
office of James Kerner turned out to be innocent enough from all appearances. It was a legitimate business. We locked the place carefully and moved to the next building and gained access to the fourth floor gymnasium operated by Butsy Regan. Now look, lots of barbells and junk laying around. Don't, don't trip on me. I won't. Hmm. Three windows facing across the park. Suzette's room is the sixth from the corner of the hotel on the fourth floor. Yeah. Perfect view from here, all right. Yeah, then a maid could have been blasted from here. Yes, turn on the lights. Lights? You want to give us away to the cops? Nobody will notice. It's only a gym. There isn't even a watchman in the building. Okay, you want lights, you get lights. Yeah. I... What are you looking for? This, for one thing, on the windowsill here. Oh, it's just a mark in the dust, that's all I yes, see. Yes, the same kind of a mark a gun barrel would make if it were arrested there to steady the aim. Hey, that's right, hey. And there may be an empty cartridge on the floor somewhere. Hey, stop, stop. What was that, anyhow? Bullet came through the window, but no gunshot. That means it came from the hotel across the park. Crawl over and douse the lights, then we can get out of here. Wait a minute. You mean whoever picked off the maid from over here is now trying to blast us from over there? That's right, Mark. Because we're too close to winding this up. We're going back to the Fair Hills Hotel for our final visit. <laughs> Going back into the hotel this time was a bit more nerve-wracking than other visits. The would-be killer now knew that somebody was closing in, and we were logical suspects, even though it might have been impossible to recognize us fully through a telescopic sight, which also accounted for the maid being victim of the bullet intended for Suzette. I posted Mark near the elevators where he could stop anybody who tried to leave. I headed for the prince's chamber, but just then the door opened and out stepped Dr. Kerner. Well, Mr. Race, how nice to see you again. You're abroad rather late, doctor. Uh, the prince needed some attention, mostly medical in this case. He's been injured? Oh, no, just a severe headache from standing on his head. It's really very amusing. I think he's doing all this simply because his mother told him to do it, for some unfathomable reason. I thought it was an act. Is he sleeping now? Oh, yes, very soundly. He won't come round until morning. Uh, a man at the elevator may try to prevent your leaving, Doctor. Just tell him I said it was all right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Race. And I'm especially glad I saw you because I have a gift I'd like you to accept. Oh? It's this picture of my mother, since you admire the other so much. Well, thank you, Doctor. Just what I've always wanted. I stuffed Mother Kerner's picture into my pocket next to my heart and headed for Suzette's apartment. I opened the door and the room was empty. But I caught the sound of voices from behind the drapes that separated the Maharani's quarters from Suzette's. I moved over and listened. But why can't I tell him why? Because I have ordered you to say nothing. I know how to handle these things and I shall tell him when the time is right. He's my husband. He has a right to know immediately. I've listened to you long enough. Well, girls, we seem to be having a disagreement. How dare you intrude? You keep quiet. Now, Suzette. What is it she doesn't want you to tell your husband? I'm going to have a baby. A new little prince. Which the Maharani couldn't keep quiet forever unless you happen to be dead. What, what are you insinuating? I'm impossible? insinuating that you were trying to kill this girl so that she and her child wouldn't be able to take top spot in your son's affections. You don't like the backseat, old girl. But you shot a maid by accident. And that's still the stuff that jails are made of. I'll have you thrown out at the No, you someone... won't. You hired Butsy Regan to keep him here evenings and give you the run of his gym. And a sportswoman like you can handle a rifle very well, I'm sure. Mama. Mama, it was you. Don't call me Mama. Come on, Suzette. I'll take you to another room until the police come here to pick up Mama. Police picked me up for shooting a servant? Ridiculous. And Kaijan Mama, perhaps, but not here, Mama. Not here. <laughs> police arrived finally and took Mama away to a place where you can't get very bossy unless you happen to own the keys. Suzette dashed off to tell her husband the news, both good and bad. But she had to save it until the next morning anyhow, until the headache treatment wore off. Mama wound up with a sentence that promised to keep her out of circulation until the expected junior prince would be past the diaper stage. As a matter of fact, there didn't seem to be any point in the happy little family hanging around until Mama got out. So Mark drove me down to the docks to say goodbye to Suzette and her prince as they set sail for dear old Kaijan. Ah, you know, Race, this Bon Voyage stuff always gets me down. Uh, I all the time want to cry when I start waving goodbye. Even if I don't know the people in the boat. Ah, I... uh, they better get here sooner. They'll miss the boat. Yeah. Hey, look, here comes Suzette now. Who's the guy, though? I don't know. Oh, Race! 
Grace. Oh, I'm so glad we could see you before we go. Yes, uh, thank you for your assistance. Uh, well, why do you look at me so strangely? Well, uh, I didn't recognize you for a minute, Prince. We must go aboard now. Goodbye, Mr. Race, and thank you. Have a good pleasure. It was my pleasure. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. Hey, that was kind of dopey. What, Mark? Not recognizing the prince. You've seen him before. Yes, Marcus, but you're forgetting something. All the other times, he was upside down. Adventures of Frank Race, starring Paul Dubov with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Monty Margetts, Michael Ann Barrett, Stanley Prager, and Byron Kane. This series is written and directed by Joel Murcott and Buckley Angel. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a BPS production. Thank you.